Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using interface inheritance in Java. More specifically, we're going to be looking at the implements keyword and how we can use it in our Java classes. Now, interface inheritance is a special type of inheritance in Java where we can essentially just define a template for a category of classes called an interface. And then we can implement that interface in specific instances. So if that definition doesn't make sense right now, it will by the end of this video. So what I want to do is I want to create an interface just to show you guys exactly what it is and what it's doing. And an interface is essentially just a template for a type of class. So it's a template for other classes. So for example, I could create a animal interface and then I could use that interface to create like a cow class or a dog class or a cat class. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can do something like that in this video. But down here in this uh, default package, I'm just gonna make a new, and I'm gonna make a new interface. So usually we would make a new class, but this time I'm gonna make a new interface. So I'm just gonna click interface, and down here we can just give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this animal. And this is gonna be an interface that we'll use for an animal class. So up here you can see that we created this animal.java file and also this public interface animal. So essentially what an interface does is it acts as a template for other classes, right? So a class is basically a way that we can define like a data type, right? We can model a real world entity inside of a class. But sometimes what you want to do is you want to have groups of classes that are related. So for example, like we'll have classes that all represent different animals, right? So I could have a class for a dog, a class for a cat, a class for a cow. All those classes are animals. And a lot of times what you'll want to do is define a template for those classes. So we'll want to define something called an interface, which will basically specify like, hey, all animals have this and all animals have that. So the cat, the dog, and the cow all need to have these attributes. And that's essentially what an interface does. So let me show you how we can create an interface. Inside of this animal interface, I want to define two functions. And these are going to be two things that all animals are going to have to do or that all animal classes are going to be able to do. So I'm just going to define some methods. So I'm going to say public speak and I'm going to make an open and close parentheses and then I'm going to use a semicolon. And I'm also going to say, and actually I need to give this a return type. So this is going to be void. And then I'm going to say public void eat. So I'm giving this animal interface two methods. And essentially what I'm saying here is that all animal classes that I create should be able to speak and should be able to eat. So all animals speak and eat, right? That's essentially what we're saying here. And so now that I define this interface, I can actually do what's called implementing this interface. So I could create an actual animal class, like a dog or a cat or a cow, and I could use these methods, I could inherit these methods from this interface. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna come over here to this default package and I'm gonna make a class. So I'm just gonna say class and over here, we're just gonna call this dog. So we're gonna make a dog class and I'm just gonna click finish. So we'll make this dog class. Now up here, this class is representing a dog. So this class is modeling a dog in our program and a dog is a type of animal, right? A dog belongs to like the higher level category of animals. And so I defined this animal interface. And since a dog is an animal, I can implement all of the functions of an animal. So I can implement all these methods inside of this dog class. So what I can say is implements and then the name of the interface. So I can say animal. Once I say implements animal, you'll notice over here, I'm getting an error on this dog word. And down here it says the type dog must implement the inherited abstract method animal.eat. And so there's this little button down here that says add unimplemented methods. And if you're using Eclipse, you can just click this. And what's gonna happen is these two functions are gonna show up. So it says public void speak, public void eat, and we're using these two at override keywords. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm implementing all of the methods inside of this animal interface into my dog.java class. 
So the animal interface is basically saying like, hey, all animals should have a method for speaking and a method for eating. So if you want to implement the animal interface, you have to have these two methods inside of there. And you'll notice that these are empty methods. So what I could do is I could just come in here and say what happens when the dog speaks. So I could say like system that out that print line and I'll just say woof woof because that's what a dog says, right? Dog barks. And then down here when it says eat, I can say, okay, the dog would maybe like eat some kibble. So we can say eat some kibble, right? So I'm basically defining what the dog does when it speaks and what the dog does when it eats. Now, let's say that in addition to a dog, I also wanted to create another animal class. So I wanted to model another animal inside of my program. I can come back over here and we'll make another class and I'm just gonna call this one cow. So we'll make a class for a cow and I'll click finish. Now I can do the same exact thing with this cow. So I can say cow implements animal because a cow is a type of animal. And I can again add these unimplemented methods. So this is just gonna automatically put in public void speak and public void eat with these little override keywords. And basically this just means that I'm overriding the method. And in here we'll say what happens when a cow speaks. And this is just gonna be moo, because that's what cows say. And then down here, the cow is probably gonna be like eating some grass or something. So we'll just say, eats some grass. So we save this, and now I wanna make one more animal class. So I'm just gonna say new class, and now we're gonna make a class for a bird. So I'll just say bird, and we can just say finish. So now we have our bird class, and once again, I'm gonna implement the animal interface and I'll add in those unimplemented methods. So we have this speak method and this eat method. So when a bird speaks, tweet, tweet, that's what birds say. And then down here, we'll just have the bird eating like a worm or something. All right, so let's go over into our app.java class. And here I have my main method. And I wanna show you guys why implementing that animal interface is so useful. So if I wanted to, I could just create, for example, like a cow object. I could say cow, my cow is equal to new cow, right? I could do this and I'll be able to create a cow. And so I could say like my cow dot eat and the cow is basically just gonna eat. So if I say my cow dot eat, it's gonna say eat some grass. So we're doing that with the cow. I could also do the same thing with a dog. So down here, I could, instead of saying cow, I can just say dog and my dog dot eat. So basically I'm creating a dog now and the dog's gonna eat. So the cow eats some grass, the dog eats some kibble. But remember, both of these classes are implementing that animal interface. So technically, according to Java, both the cow and the dog are animals. So instead of saying cow, my cow is equal to new cow, I could actually say, animal my cow is equal to new cow and i could say animal my dog is equal to new dog because technically the cow is an animal and the dog is an animal so if i say this it's actually going to work the same way so while the cow and the dog are technically the cow data type and the dog data type they're also both the animal data type and what's cool about this, and I'll show you over here, is we can actually create, for example, like an array of animals and we'll have a cow, a dog, and we could also have a bird inside of it. So I could say animal, and I'm gonna create an array of animals. So I'm just gonna say animal, these open and close square brackets, and I'll just say animals. And now I can actually set this equal to a bunch of different animals. So in here I could say new cow, and then down here we could say new dog, and down here we could say new bird. So inside of this animals array, I'm actually able to store three different types of classes. I'm able to store a dog alongside a cow, alongside a bird, right? Because even though they're different classes, they're all technically the same type. They're all technically animals. And I wanna show you what's really cool about this. So, what I can do is I could actually write a loop 
that's gonna loop through this animals array. And I'm actually able to call the same methods on all of these classes. So I'll show you guys. I'm gonna say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than animals.length i plus plus. So I'm basically just gonna loop through this array of animals. And down here, what I wanna say is I basically just wanna print out animals i dot eat, right? And what I can do is I can run this program and it's gonna say, eat some grass, eat some kibble, eats a worm. So I'm able to call this same dot eat method, but on three different types of classes. So I, instead of saying dot eat, I could also say like dot speak. And now instead of saying what they're eating, it's gonna say what they say. So I can say like the cow says moo, the dog woof woof, the bird tweet tweet. But what's cool about this is I'm storing these three different objects, these three different types of objects. So the cow object, the dog object, and the bird object, all of which are using different classes inside of this same animals array because technically, even though they're different classes, they're all the same like high level data type. And this is what's really cool about interfaces. So you'll notice down here, like all of these three classes have this same dot speak method, right? We know for a fact that they all have that dot speak method because when we implemented the animal interface, it forced us to create them. It forced us, it said, hey, you have to create a speak method if you wanna be an animal. You know, it said, okay, this cow has to have a speak method if it wants to be an animal, or this bird has to have a speak method if it wants to be an animal, if it wants to be considered the data type animal. And what we can do by forcing all of those classes to have those specific methods is do something like this where we're using three different classes, three different types of classes in the same array and using the same dot speak method. So that's why interfaces are awesome. That's why implementation inheritance is awesome. And this is a super powerful way of structuring your classes inside of Java. So whenever you have classes that fall into the same category and need to have the same functions, consider using an interface. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.